the Christian Langley Center's production of the Taming of the Shrew. This is an abridged version of Shakespeare's famous play. We and us have been added to the play to help to play any difficult parts. Our story begins in the romantic land of Italy. A young man, Lucentio, arrives in Padua to study at the university, but his servant, Tranio, thinks he should have some fun, too. Tranio, sense for my great desire to see fair Padua, nursery of the arts, I am arrived. My trusty servant, well approved and all. Here, let us read, and happily institute a course of learning and genius studies. Let's be no stoics nor stocks, I pray. No profit grows where no pleasure is taken. Tranio, well does that advise. If beyond Delaware come ashore, we got once put us in readiness, and take up a lodging fit to entertain such friends as time and Padua shall be get. But say a while, what company is this? A rich gentlewoman, Baptista, is determined that her young sweet daughter, Bianca, cannot marry until her older daughter, bad-tempered Katerina, is married first. Gentlemen, it will show me no further, for I am firmly resolved, that is, not to bestow my younger daughter, before I have a husband for the elder. If either of you both love Catherine, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. To court her, rather? She is too rough for me. <laughs> there, there, Hortensio, will you any wife? I pray you, mother, is it your will to make a sale of me amongst these mates? And no mates for you, unless you have a gentler, milder mold. Oh, I have faith, sir. You shall have never need to fear, as I wish it not halfway to my heart. But if it were, doubt not my care would be to comb your noodle with a three-legged stool. Condition. To be whipped at the high cross every morning. <laughs> Pay 
<laughs> As you say, there is small choice in rotten apples. But come, by helping Baptista's eldest daughter to her husband, we set her youngest free for her husband. Sweet Bianca. How say you, Sr. Gomeo? I am agreed. So Bianca's two students will try to find a husband for Katarina. Meanwhile, after seeing Bianca's learning and gentle behavior, Lucentio has fallen desperately in love with her. Tronio notices that his master has fallen for Bianca. I pray, sir, is it possible that love should have a sudden taken such hold? Oh, Tronio, till I found it to be true, I never thought it possible or likely. But see, while idly I stood looking on, I found the effect of love and idleness. Tronio, I burn, I pine, I perish, Tronio, if I achieve not this young, modest girl. Uh, counsel me, Tronio, for I know that pants. Master, you look so longly on the maid. Perhaps you not marked the piss of it all. Oh, yes. I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter Ragnar had, that made great Jove to humble himself to her hand. Saw you no more? Mark you not how her sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal ears could hardly endure the din? Tranio, I saw her coral lips to move, and with her breath did she perfume the air. Sacred and sweet was all that I saw in her. Nay, tis time to awake him from his trance. I pray, awake, sir, thus it stands. Her elder sister is so cursed and true that till her mother rinse her hands with her, your love must live a maid at home. Ah, try what a cruel mother she. But, art thou not advised? She took some care to get her cunning schoolmasters to instruct her. Aye, marry am I, sir. Now it is plotted. I have- Master, thus it stands. For my hand will there have mentioned me to jump at once. Tell me thine first. You will be the schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. That's your device. It is. Uh, maybe done. Not possible. But for who shall bear your part in Padua, the hero of Vincentio's son? Lucentia and Tyrannio devise a plan. They will exchange places, and Tyrannio will pretend to court Bianca, while Lucentio woos her as her schoolmaster. Content thee, for I have it full. We've not yet been seen in any house, and it stands thus. Thou shalt be master, Tranio, in my stead. I will be some other be. Tis hatched, and shall be so. When Biondello comes, he waits on you. But I will charm him first to keep his tongue. So had you need. In brief, sir, a sit that your pleasure is. I am tied to be obedient. I am content to be Lucentio. <laughs> <laughs> Lucentio's servant, Biondello, arrives, and Lucentio lies to him in order to explain why he and Tranio have exchanged clothes and places. Ah, here comes the rogue. Sir, where have you been? Where have I been? Nay, how now? Where are you? Master, has my fellow Tranio stolen your clothes? Are you stolen his? Or both? Pray, what's the news? Sir, come in. Your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and countenance on, and I, for my escape, have put on his. For, in a quarrel since I came ashore, I killed a man with this thumb. <laughs> Wait you on him, while I make way from hence, to save my life. You understand me? I, sir, never wit. And not a jot of Tranio in your mouth. Tranio is changed into Lucentio. The better for him. Would I were so too? Tranya, let's go. One more thing, rest, that I self execute. To make one among these wooers. If thou ask me why, suffice it. My reasons are both good and weighty. The suitors know that in order to marry Bianca, they must find a husband for her angry sister. But what man can the suitors get to marry Katarina, the shrew? Here comes a new arrival. Gentlemen, it's your guilt. Ah, fair Verona, for a while I take my leave. 
to see my friends in Padua, and of all my most beloved and approved friend Hortensio. Uh, and I trow this is his house. Sir Grumio, knock, I say. Knock, sir? Who shall I knock? <laughs> is there any man has riposte your worship? Villain, I say, knock me here soundly, and wrap me well. Sir? <laughs> Why, sir, what am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? <laughs> Villain, I say, knock me at this gate and wrap me well. <laughs> My master has grown quarrelsome. <laughs> I should knock you first, and then know hereafter who comes by the worst. <laughs> <laughs> See that debt? Any hand, and see that you read no other lectures to her. 
And take your papers too, and let me have them very well perfumed for. She's sweeter than perfume itself to whom they go to. Uh, all you read to her. Whatever I read to her, I'll plead for you. As for my patron, the stand you so assured. Oh, this learning, what a thing it is! Oh, this woodcock, what an ass it is! Peace, sir. Grumio, Mom, the gods save you, Signor Grumio! Uh, and you are well met, Signor Hortensio. Troy with her uncle, to Baptiste Minor. I promise to inquire carefully about the schoolmaster for the fair Bianca, and by good fortune I have lighted on this young man. Tis well, and I have met a man who promised to help me to another, a fine musician to instruct her mistress. So shall I know with thee behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me. So beloved of me that my deeds shall prove, and that his bags shall prove. The beast, Romeo, does now not the time to vent our love. Here is a gentleman whom by chance I met will undertake to woo cursed Catherine, yea, and to marry her in her dowry, please. <laughs> so said, so done as well. Hortensio, have you told him all her faults? I, I know she is an <laughs> irksome, brawling scold. If that be all, masters, I hear no harm. Uh, oh, sir, such a life with such a wife were strange. But if you have the stomach, to it to God's name, you shall have me assisting you and all. But will you woo this wild cat? Why came I hither but to this intent? Think you a little din can daunt mine ears? Have I not in a battle heard loud barums neighing, steeds and trumpets clang? And now do you tell me of a woman's tongue, whose voice gives not half so great a blow to hear? Tush, tush. And here comes Toronto, disguised as a rich young master who sent you. He pretends to court Bianca too. Petruchio makes it clear that he intends to court Katarina. Gentlemen, God save you. If I may be so bold, tell me which is the readiest way to the house of Signora Baptista Manola? She that has the two fair daughters, isn't she, you mean? Even she, Biondello. Thank you, sir. You mean not her too. But perhaps. What have you to do? Oh, not her that chides, sir. At any hand, I pray. I love no chiders. Biondello, let's away. Well begun, Tranya. Uh, sir, a word here you go. Are you a suitor to the maid you talk of, yea or no? And if I be, sir, is it any offense? No, if without more words we will get you hence. <laughs> Why, sir, I pray. Are the streets not as free for me as for you? So is not she. She's the choice love of <laughs> Signor Grumio. Well, in fact, she's the chosen of Signor Patricio. Fair lady's daughter had a thousand suitors. One well more may Fair Bianca have, and so she shall. Lucentio shall make one. Uh, good Hortensio, to what end are all these words? Uh, sir, may I be supposed <coughs> to ask, have you ever yet seen Baptista's daughter? No, sir, but I hear she doth have two. One as famous for her scolding tongue, as the other for her modest views. Uh, sir, sir, the, the first's for me. Uh, let her go by. Yeah, leave that labor to the great Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> and if he break the ice and do the feet, achieve the elder, leave the younger feet for our access, whose half shall be to have her, will not so graceless be to be ingrate. But say, Let's do as adversaries do in law. Strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. Oh, excellent motion. Balloose, let us be gone. with me all this. 
this while. I prithee, Sister Kate, untie my hands. Ah! If that be yes, then all the rest was so! Ah! No, 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 Jane, my ah! throat is in touch! Ah! Stand aside. Poor oh, girl, she weeps. Why didst thou wrong her that ne'er did wrong me? Why did she cross thee with a bitter word? Her silence locked me, and I'll be revenged! What time? Oh, my God! Leon, get thee. Now, by the world, tis a 
lusty wench. I love her now ten times more than e'er I did. <laughs> no, how I long to have some chat with her. Well, come look thee and be not so discontented. Proceed and practice with my younger daughter, for she's apt to learn and thankful for her charms. Signor Petruchio, will you come with us, or shall I send my daughter Kate to you? I pray you do. Say that she read. I'll tell her plain she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. And say that she frown. I'll tell her she looks as clear as a morning rose newly washed with dew. Ah, but here she comes. And now, Petruchio, speak. Ah, good morrow, Kate, for that's your name, I hear. Uh, well, have you heard? But something hard of hearing. They call me Catherine. That you speak of me? Uh, you lie, for you are called plain Kate, and Bonnie Kate, and sometimes Kate the Cursed. But Kate, the Kate of Kate Hall, and the prettiest Kate in all of Christendom, take this of me, Kate, of my consolation, that hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtue spoke of, and thy beauty sounded, though not half so much as to thee belongs, myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. <laughs> moved? In good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first. You were immovable. Why, what's immovable? A joint in stew. Why, thou hast hit it. Come, Kate, sit on me. Oh. No, come, alas, I, I will not burden thee. For no one needs me but young and light. Too light for such swain as you catch. And yet it's heavy as my weight should be. Oh, come, come, you wasp of faith. You are too angry. Uh, if I be waspish, best beware my sting. My remedy, then, is to pluck it out. <laughs> Aye, if the fool can find where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Well, whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails. And so, fair enough. With my tongue in your tail, then come again, Kate. I am a gentle. Ha! That'll try. Oh! I swear I'll cuff you if you strike me again. So may you lose your arms. If you strike me, you are no gentleman. If no gentleman, why then no arms? I think. Come again, Kate. You must not look so sad. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why? Here's no crab. Therefore, look not sad. There is. Why then there show is. it me? Had I a glass, I would. You mean my face? <laughs> well aimed of such a young one. Now, why, St. George, I am too young for you. Ugh, yet you are withered. It is with care. I scare not! Nay, in sooth, Kate, you speak not so. Oh, I take you! If I tarry, let me go! Wait, not a what? Oh. For I found oh. you passing gentle. Oh, oh. twas full of oh. you are rough oh. and coy and oh. But now oh. I find the work a very oh. For thou art pleasant, oh. gamesome, passing oh. courteous. Why doth the world report that oh. Kate doth limp? O slanderous ah! world! Ah! Let me see thee walk, that thou dost not halt. Go! Fool! Ah! And whom thou keepest command! Didst ever Diana so become a grove, as did Kate this chamber with her princely gait? Where did you stop all this goodly speech? Why, it is extempore from my motherhood. A witty mother, witless out her son! Ah, oh, but sweet Captain, setting all this chat aside, your mother hath agreed that you shall be my wife. <gasps> your dowry agreed on, and will you, nil you, I will marry you. Oh, but here comes your mother. <gasps> Never make denial. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. <laughs> Say, Senior Grammio, how speed you with my daughter? Uh, how but well, yeah. ma'am, how but well. Yeah. It were impossible. I should speed up. And you, Catherine, in your dumps, call you me daughter! Now I promise you, you have shown a tender motherly regard to wish me well, to what a happy mother it is! <laughs> Tis thus, you and all the world that did speak of her have talked amiss of her. For she's not froward, but modest as the morning dove. Indeed, she'll prove a Roman Lucretia for her chastity. And, to conclude, we have agreed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding. I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first! 
Hawk Petruchio, she says she'll see the hang of us. <laughs> it is bargained twixt us twain, being alone, that she'll still be cursed in company. Uh, it is wonderful to perceive how much she loves me. The sweetest Kate, come give me your hand. I must unto Venice to buy apparel against the wedding day. Uh, mother, bid the guests and provide the feast. I am sure my Catherine will be fine. Um, I know not what to say, but give me your hands! God send you joy, son, for to give! Tis a match! <laughs> Mother and wife and gentlemen, adieu. I must on to Venice. Sunday comes apace, and we shall have rooms and things in fine array. But kiss me, Kate. We shall be married a Sunday. Ah! <laughs> Since Katerina is to be married, now the suitors can ask for a sweet Bianca's hand. Was ever a match clapped up so suddenly? <laughs> and now, to your youngest daughter, I am your neighbor, and was a suitor first. Uh, but I am the one that loves Bianca more than words can witness or thoughts can guess. Young, thou canst not love so dear as I. Raybeard, thy love doth breathe. <laughs> Baptista will have Bianca marry the man who will give her the most money for a dowry. Gentlemen, content you. Be of both. I can offer my daughter the greatest dower. She'll have my Bianca's love. Say, Signor Gremio, what can you show her? Well, as you know, my house within the city is richly furnished with plate and gold, costly apparel, tents, canopies, fine linens, turkey cushions, bossed with pearl, pewter, and brass, and all things that belong to the house or housekeeping. If I die tomorrow, this shall be hers. If whilst I live, she shall be only mine. That only came well in. Madame, list to me. I am my father's heir and only son. I'll leave her three or four houses within rich Pisa's walls, as any old Gremio has in Padua, as well as two thousand ducats by the year of land, all which shall be her jointure. What? Have I pitched you, Signor Romeo? Two thousand ducats by the year of land? My land not amount to so much at all. But, nay, I have offered all, I have no more, and she can have no more than all I have. If you like me, she shall have me and mine. Why then, the maid is mine from all the world by your firm promise. Romeo is out wide. I must confess, your offer is best. Well, I am thus resolved. As you know, on Sunday next, Bianca is not to be married, but Catherine is to be married to Petruchio. Now, on the Sunday following, shall Bianca cry to you if you make this assurance? And if not, see no And so I am thus resolved. Thank you both. I do, good neighbor. Fiddler, forbear. You grow too forward, sir. Have you so soon forgot the entertainment her sister Catherine welcomed you with all? But, rambling pedant, this is the patroness of heavenly harmony. They give me leave to have prerogative, and when in music we have spent an hour, your lecture shall have leisure for as much. Preposterous acts! That never been so far as to know the cause why music for bane. Was it not to refresh the mind of man after his studies or his usual pain? Sir, I will not bear these brains of thine! Gentlemen, you do me double wrong to strive for that which rests in my choice. I'll not be tied to hours nor pointed times, but learn my lessons as I please myself. Here sit we down, play you the whiles. His lecture will be done ere you have to. You'll leave his lecture when I meet you. Uh, that will be never. A tune okay. instrument. Now, where left we last? Uh, here, madam. Construe them. <clears throat> Hic ibot, as I told you before. Simois, I am Lucentio. Hic est, son unto Vincentio of Pisa. <laughs> Seguer talus, disguised thus to get your love. Hic steterot, and that man Lucentio that comes a wooing. 
Creami, is my man Tranya. Madam, my instrument is in tune. Let's hear. Oh, pie. The treble jars. I spin the whole man. Tune again. Now, let me see if I can construe it. Hic ebat simois. I know you not. Hic est segea telus. I trust you not. <laughs> Hic steterat priami. Take heed he hear us not. Regia. Presume not. Kelsa senis. Despair. Madam. Tis now in tune. Uh, all about the base. The base is right. Tis the base knave, the jars. Now for my life, the knave doth court my love. Pedestal, I'll watch you better yet. In time I may believe, yet I mistrust. <coughs> mistrust it not, for sure. Uh, Aeacides was Ajax, called so from his grandfather. I must believe my master, else I promise you I should be arguing still upon that doubt, but let it rest. Now to you. Good master, take it not unkindly, pray, that I have been thus pleasant with you both. And now you may go walk and give me leave a while, and let us make no music in three parts. Why, are you so formal, sir? Well, I must wait and watch with all. For, but I be deceived, our fine musician groweth amorous. Oh, madam, before you touch the instrument, to learn the order of my fingering, I must begin with rudiments of art to teach you gamut and grief of sorts. And there it is in writing, fairly drawn. Why, I am past my gamut long ago. Here, to read the gamut of Hortensio. Gamut. I am the ground of all accord, all red, to plead Hortensio's passion. Be me, Bianca, take it for thy lord. <laughs> See Faut, that loves with all affection. De sol re, one cleft two notes have I. E la me, show pity or I die. <laughs> Call you this get? Tut, I like it not. Old fashion must please me best. I'm not. So nice as to change true rules for odd invention. <laughs> Mistress, the mother prays you leave your books and help her to your sister's chamber. You know tomorrow is Wednesday. Yes, indeed it is. Well, farewell, sweet masters, both. I must be gone. Uh, faith, Mistress, then I have no cause to say. But I have cause to cry into this pit. Methinks he looks as though he were in love. Take it. 
taken out of the town armor with a broken hilt and two broken points, his horse hipped with an old mossy saddle. Who comes with him? Oh, madam, his lackey. For all the world, comparison like the horse. The linen stock on one leg and a cursing boot hose on the other. A monster, a very monster in apparel. Not like a Christian foot boy or a gentleman's lackey. He has some meaning in his odd apparel. We will persuade him to put on better. Well, I'm glad he comes. Howsoever he comes. Why, madam, he comes not. Didst thou not say he comes? Who, that Petruchio came? Oh, that Petruchio came. No, madam, I say his horse comes with him on his back. Let's <laughs> <Right to> one! <laughs> Where be these gallants? Who is at home? You are welcome, sir. And yet, I come not well. And yet you halt not. Not so well apparelled as I wished you were. But, but where is where is Kate? But where is my lovely bride? How does my mother dance? Methinks you frown. Well, today is your wedding day. At first we were sad hearing that you would not come. No sadder that you come so unprovided. What an eyesore for a solemn festival. See not your bride in these unreverent robes. Go to my chamber, put on clothes of mine. Not I, believe me. Thus I will visit her. But thus I trust you will not marry her. Good sooth, even thus, therefore have done with words. To me she is married, not unto my clothes. But what a fool am I to chat with you, and I should good, good bid good morrow to my bride, and seal the title with a lovely kiss. <laughs> he has some meaning in that strange apparel. We will persuade him, be it possible, to put on better ere he go to church. I'll after him and see the event of this. Well, the wedding takes place. Lucentio and Tranio made plans for Lucentio secretly marry Bianca. For good meetings, to steal our wedding, where it's not my fellow schoolmaster doth watch Bianca's stiff so narrowly. Wait, once the wedding is performed, let all the world say no. I'll hold mine own despite of all the world. We will look into this degree by manners, by and by, and we will overreach the graybeard Grebio, all for my master's sake, Lucentio. Oh, Signor Grebio, came you from the church? As willingly as I am, came from school. <laughs> and is the bride and bridegroom coming home? Uh, a bridegroom, say you? Tis a groom indeed, a grumbly groom, and that that girl <laughs> shall find. Why, curser than she, tis impossible. Why, he's a devil, a devil, a very fiend. I'll tell you so, this When the priest should ask if Katharina should be his wife, I by God's wounds, quoth the and swore so loudly that all amazed the priests let fall the book. And as he stooped again to take it up, the mad brain bridegroom took in such a cuff that down fell priest and book and book and priest. Such a mad marriage never was before. Hark, hark, I hear the minstrels play. Gentlemen and friends, I thank you for your pains, and I know you think to dine with me today, and have prepared great store of wedding cheer. But so it is, my haste doth call me hence, and therefore here I mean to take my leave. Is it possible you will away tonight? I must away today, ere night come. But, honest company, I thank you for your pains, that of all witnessed me give away myself to this most sweet, caring, and virtuous wife. Dine with my mother, drink a health to me, but I must hence, and therefore, farewell to you all. Let us entreat you to stay till after dinner. It may not be. Let me entreat you. It cannot be. Let me entreat you. I am content. Are you content to stay? I am content you will entreat me to stay, and yet not stay. Oh, no, no, no you must be stay. Grumio, my horse! Ah, oh, oh, sir, they be ready! The oats have eaten the horses. Oh, nay, then do what thou canst. I will not go today. No, nor tomorrow. Not till I please myself. Nay, come, Kate, you must not be so angry. I will be angry. What hast thou to do? Mother, be quiet. He shall stay my leisure. <laughs> I'm 
hurry, sir. It begins to work. Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool, had she not a spirit to resist. They shall go forward at thy command, Kate. Obey the bride, you that attend on her. Go forth unto the feast, revel and domineer. But as for my Kate, she must with me. Romeo, draw forth thy weapon. We are beset with these. Come, sweet Kate, they shall not touch thee. A buckler be against a million. Thank <laughs> you. 
by this reckoning, he is more shrewd than she. I, Curtis, I, and that thou, and the proudest of you all, shall find when he comes home. But what talk I of this? Call forth Nathaniel, Gregory, Philip. Do you hear home? You must meet my master and countenance my mistress. What the wrong, Grumio? How now, Grumio? Hello, How now, old lad? Ah, uh, well, Grum. You. <laughs> <laughs> How now, you? What? You. <laughs> Fellow, you. <laughs> Thus much for greeting. <laughs> now, my spruce companions, is all things ready and all things neat? All things is ready. How near is our master? He at hand. Alighted by this, therefore be not confession. Silence on your mouth! Now, where be these knaves? What no man door to hold up my stirrup nor take in my horse? Where is Nathaniel? Greg, spill it. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir, here, sir, you bummer headed unpolished grooms. Oh, where is the fool that I sent before? Uh, here, sir, as foolish as I was before. You peasant swain! Go, rascals, fetch in my dinner. Come, Kingdom, sit you down, and be merry. Oh. You, you villains win, nay, be merry, Kate. Off with my both boots, you rogues. You villains win. Oh. Ah! Some water here. Oh. Oh, nay, be merry. Oh. Shall I have some water? Where are my slippers? Oh, come, Kate, wash and welcome heartily. Oh. You horse oh. is You let it fall? Oh. 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 I pray you to look all unwilling. A horse unbeasel headed, flap eared knave. Oh, nay, come, sit down, Kate. I know you have a oh. stomach. Now, will you give grace, sweet cake, oh. or shall I? What's this? Mutton? Aye. 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 And who brought it? Aye. Tis burnt, and so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where is the rascal cook? There take it, you trenchers. Oh. Pops and oh. I pray you, be not so disquiet. The meat was well, if you were so tempted. I tell thee, it was burnt and dried away. Oh. But be patient. Uh, tomorrow it shall all be mended. Tonight we will fast for company. Come, I'll bring thee to your bridal chamber. Philip, did this ever see the like? He kills her in her own humor. Make sure Kate barely sleeps or eats for the next day. <laughs> she eats no meat today, nor none shall eat. And last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not. Uh, as with the meat, I'll find some undeserved fault with the making of the bed, and thus I'll curb her mad and headstrong humor. This is a way to kill a wife with kindness. <laughs> he that knows better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak. Tis charity to show. Lucentio and Bianca are in love. Sir, 
to satisfy you in what I have said, stand by and mark the manner of his teaching. Uh, now, mistress, and profit you in what you read. What master reads you? First resolve me that. I read that I profess the art to love. And may you prove, sir, master of your art. Well, you, sweet dear, prove mistress of my heart. Oh, the spiteful love, unconstant womankind, I tell thee, this is wonderful! <laughs> the sinews that you, here is my hand, and here I firmly vow never to woo her no more, but do forswear her as one unworthy of all the former favors that I have fully flattered her with all. And here I take the unfeigned oath never to marry her, though she would entreat. Would all the world but he had quite forsworn? Now as for me, that I may surely keep my oath, I will be married to a wealthy widow. Kindness in women, not their beauty's looks, shall win my love. So I take my lead in resolution, as I swore before. Mistress Bianca, bless you with such grace as belongeth to a lover's blessed case. Nay, I have taken you now in gentle love, and to have forsworn you with Hortensio. Oh, Tronio, you jest, but... I have you both for swarming. Mistress we have. In faith, he'll have a lusty widow that's wooed him one in a day. God give it him joy. Ah, and he'll tame her. He says so, Tronio. He says so. <laughs> <laughs> Trucio's house, Katrina is getting hungrier and hungrier and begs Grubio to find her some food. No! No! Forsooth! I dare not! For my life! Oh, the more my wrong, the more his spite appeared! What? Did he marry me to banish me? I am starved for me to keep her lack of sleep. Myself and bring it thee. I 
am sure, sweet Kate, this kindness merits thanks. What? Not a word? Why then, thou lovest it not. Here, take this oh, dish away. Oh, no, I pray you, let it stand. The poorest service repaid is repaid with thanks, and so shall mine before you touch the meat. Uh, I thank you, sir. Uh, Signor Petruchio, why, you are to blame. Come, Mistress Kate, I will bear you company. Uh, eat it all up, Hortensio, if thou lovest me. Much good do it unto thy gentle heart. Oh, come, come, Kate, and eat your pace. And now, my honey love, what, hast thou dined? Why, then the tailor stays thy leisure to deck thy body with his ruffling treasure. Come, tailor, let's see these ornaments. Lay forth the gown. Ah, what news with you, sir? Here's the cracker, worship. What? This was molded on a porringer, a velvet dish. It is lewd and filthy, fine, fine. Come, I'll have a bigger. Uh, I'll have no bigger. This doth fit the time. And gentlewomen wear such caps as these. And when you are gentle, you shall have one. <laughs> Not till then. That shall not be in haste. I sir, I trust I may have leave to speak, and speak I will. I am no child, no babe. Why, thou sayest true. It is a paltry cap. Uh, I like thee well in that thou lovest it not. <laughs> love me or love me not. I like the cap. And it I will have, or I will have none. Oh. Uh, uh, thy gown, uh, come, Taylor, let's see it. Oh, mercy, God, well, what masking stuff is here? What, Taylor, is this a sleeve? Tis like a demi cannon. <laughs> I see she's uh. like to have neither cap nor gown. You bid me make it orderly well, according to Mary and did, but if you be remembered, I did not bid thee mar it to the time. I'll have none of it. Go, take it hence, make your best of it. I never saw a better fashioned gown, more quaint, more pleasing, nor more commendable. Be like you mean to make a puppet of me? Why, thou speakest true. She means to make a puppet of me. She says, Your Worship, you mean to make a puppet of me. What, thou liest, thou false deluding slave! Thou rat rag, thou thimble, thou thread! Away, thou quantity, thou remnant! I tell thee, I, that thou hast marred the gown. Your worship is deceived. The gown is made just as my master had direction it. Ruby obeyed order how it should be done. I gave him no order! I gave him the stuff! <laughs> how did you desire it should be made? Mary, sir, with needle and thread! request to have cut? <laughs> oh, thou hast faced many things. I have. Face not me. Thou hast braved many men. Brave not me. I will neither be faced nor braved. Sir, I bid thy master cut out the gown. But I did not bid him cut it to pieces. Ergo, thou liest. Why, here is the note of fashion to testify. Read it. The note lies in his throat if she say I said so. In primus, a loose body gown. <laughs> oh, sir, if ever I said loose bodied gown, sew me in the skirts of it and beat me to death with the bottom of a brown thread. I said, yeah. Proceed. With a small compassed cape. I confess the cape. <laughs> With the trunk sleeve. I confess two sleeves. The sleeves curiously cut. Aye, there's the bill. Error in the bill, sir, error in the bill. I commanded the sleeves be cut out and sewn up again, and that I will prove upon thee. Though thy little finger be on the thimble. Well, in brief, the gown is not for me. You are in the right, sir. Tis for my mistress. <laughs> Go, take it up unto thy master's use. Villain, not for thy life. Take up my mistress' gown for thy master's use? Uh, Hortensio, say thou wilt see this tailor paid. Go, take it hence, be gone, and say no more. A tailor. 
I'll pay thee for thy gout tomorrow. Take no unkindness of his hasty words. Away, I say, commend me to thy master. Come, we must unto thy mothers, even thee, in these honest mean habiliments. Our purses shall be proud, our garments poor, for it is the mind that makes the body rich. But I see it is now some seven o'clock, and well we may come there before supper time. Uh, I dare assure you, sir, tis almost two, and will be supper time ere you come there. It shall be seven ere I go to horse. Look what I say and do and think to do. You are still crossing it. Well, sirs, let it alone. I shall not go today. And ere I go to horse, it shall be what a pop I say it is. Right. So this gallant will command the sun. Perchucius still acting like a madman. And at last, Katerina decides to give in. Come, come, in God's name. We must once more unto thy mothers. Oh, good Lord, how bright and goodly shines the moon. <laughs> the moon? The sun? It is not moonlight now. I say it is the moon that shines so bright. Oh, I know it is the sun that shines so bright. Now by my mother's son. And that's myself. It shall be moon or star or what I list ere we journey to your mother's house. Say as he says, or we shall never go. Oh, forward, I pray. And be it moon or sun or whatever you please. I say it is the moon. I know it is the moon. Why then thou likes? It is the blessed sun. Oh, why did oh. God be blessed? It is the blessed sun. But the sun, it is not. When you say it is not. And the moon changes even as your mind. What? Will you have it named even that it already is? And so it shall be for Catherine. Petruchio, go thy ways. The field is won. Oh, but soft. Here comes something. Oh, my. Petruchio decides to pretend an old man they meet is a young girl. Oh, good morrow, gentle mistress. Oh, but okay, to tell me truly, hast thou ever seen a fresher gentlewoman? Once more, good morrow unto thee, gentlewoman, and embrace her for her beauty's sake, Kate. Young, budding virgin, <laughs> fair, fresh, and sweet, whither away, or where is thy abode? Happy the parents of so fair a child. Why, Kate, I hope thou art not mad, for this is a man. Oh, oh, faded, oh. withered, and not a gentlewoman, as thou sayest he is. Oh, pardon, old father, my bad mistake. My eyes have been so bedazzled by the sun <laughs> that everything I look upon seemeth green. Now I perceive that thou art a reverend father. Pardon me, I pray thee, my mad mistake. Fair sir, and you, my merry mistress, with your Strange encounter, much amazed me. My name is called Vincentio, my dwelling Pisa, and bound I am to Padua, there to visit a son of mine which long I have not seen. What's his name? Lucentio, gentle sir. Well, happily we met him, the happier for thy son. Therefore, let me embrace with old Vincentio, and wander we to see thy honest son, who will of thy arrival be full joyous. But is it true, or is it your pleasure, like pleasant travelers? Break the chest upon the company you overtake. I do assure thee, Father, so it is. Back in Padua, Beyond Hill has made arrangements with a priest who will secretly marry Lucentio and Bianca. So please, 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 sir, the priest is ready. I fly, Beyond Hill, uh, but they may need to, but they may need you at home. Uh, therefore, leave us. I'll see the church on your back. Then come back to my master's as soon as I can. After the 
secret marriage, Baptista arrives at Lucentio's house at the same time as Petruchio, Caterina, and Lucentio, Lucentio's father. Now, Bianca and Lucentio have to face their parents after the secret marriage, and Baptista learns for the first time that the man who is the tutoring her daughter is actually Lucentio. Pardon, sweet father. This, my sweet son? Pardon, dear mother. How hast thou offended? Where is Lucentio? Uh, here is Lucentio. Huh. Right son to the right Vincentio. That, uh, have by marriage uh, made thy daughter mine, while counterfeits Moses live thy life. Have you married my daughter that I my goodwill? Fear not, Baptista. We will content you. Go to, and I will lend to you your bank. Look not the I am the death of this knavery! Look not fail, Bianca. Thy, thy mother will not frown. A husband, let's follow to see the end of this adieu. First, kiss me, Kate, and we will. What? In the midst of the street? What? Are you ashamed of me? Oh, no, sir. God forbid! But ashamed to kiss. Why then, let's once more home. Come. Nay, stay. I will give thee a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Is not this well? Better once than never, for never to wait. Is this an answer? 
I and a kind one too. Pray God your wife not send you a worse. I hope better. Sir, be though. Go and entreat my wife to come to me. Entreat her? Ho, oh, ho. Then she must needs come. I'm afraid, sir, do what you can. Yours will not be entreated. And now, where's my wife? She says you have some goodly jests in hand. She will not come. She bids you come to her. Worse and worse. She will not come. <laughs> Sir Agrumio, go to my mistress. Tell her I command her to come to me. I know her answer. What? She will not. The fowler fortune mine, and there an end. Come um, by my holiday, and here comes Katrina. <laughs> Your sister and Hortensio's wife. Uh, they sit conferring by the parlor fire. Go, bring them hither. Ah, I. And if they refuse to come, swing them soundly forth unto their husbands. <laughs> Here is a wonder, if you talk of a wonder. Oh, how fair befall thee, son Petruchio. The way you thou hast won, and I'll add unto their losses twenty thousand crowns, for she is changed as she never had been. Nay, I'll win the wager better yet. For see where Catherine comes and brings your froward wives as prisoners to her womanly persuasion. <laughs> ah, come, Catherine. That cat becomes you not. Off with that bubble, throw it underfoot. <laughs> Lord, never let me have a cause to decide till I be brought to such a silly pass. Fie, what a foolish duty call you this? I would your duty were as foolish also. The wisdom of your duty, fair Bianca. That cost me an hundred crowns and supper time. The more for you for laying on my duty. Come, come, Catherine, I charge thee. Tell these headstrong women what duty they do owe their lords and husbands. Come, come, your mocking will has no telling. Come, and first begin with her. She shall not. I say she shall. And first begin with her. Hi, by unknit that threatening unkind brow. And art not scornful glances from those eyes. To wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled. Muddy, ill seeming, thick, bereft of beauty. And while it is so, none so dry or thirsty, will deign to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy king. Thy sovereign, the one who cares for thee, and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor both by sea and land, to watch the night in storms, the day in cold, whilst thou liest warm at home, secure and safe. I am ashamed, and women are so simple, to offer war when they should kneel for peace, or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. Oh, why, there's a wench. Come, and kiss me, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I won the wager, though thou hit the white, and being a winner, God give thee good night. <laughs> now go thy ways, for thou hast paid the curse true. Tis a wonder. By your leave, she shall be tamed so. <laughs> <laughs>